so hi, I'm David. I'm from Couchbase, uh, which is a database vendor, NoSQL database. Uh, how many people here have actually heard of NoSQL databases? Raise your hands. I know you guys have. Uh, that's pretty much everyone. Okay, that's good. That's good. I'm in the right, I'm in the right room. Okay, so we make a distributed database. Um, uh, we work with uh, JSON documents for the most part, unstructured data, and we provide all the regular stuff you expect from a dis distributed database, right? So we have clustering where you can scale your data uh, horizontally to multiple nodes, up to hundreds of nodes if you have that much data. Uh, we have you know, high availability and replication and pretty much anything you expect from a modern distributed system. And this is really not what I'm going to be talking about today. This is just you know, to give you the background of what you can do with Couchbase, right? And the essence of that is Couchbase started out as a in-memory key value store, uh, as a fork of memcache with storage. And over time, Couchbase has evolved from just a pure key value data store, very fast, uh, you know, very high performance, but there's only so much you can do with a key value data store. And over time, Couchbase has evolved into a much wider data platform that provides a bunch of capabilities like indexing and querying and full text search and integration with a bunch of interesting big data tools and data processing tools, which is really what I'm going to be talking about today. Right? And so when you talk about um, analytics, sorry? Uh, when you talk about analytics and big data tools, generally speaking, uh, the first problem you run into when you run any kind of uh, data, tra data transformation or data processing uh, is where do you put your state, right? Anyone who's ever tried to build, let's say, a storm topology or some kind of real-time processing uh, system has run into the fact that it's very unreliable to store the state you accumulate in real time in the process itself, right? If we're talking about storm, how many people actually know what Apache storm is? Here's your hands. It's like half the room, okay. Spark, heard of Spark? More people, interesting. Uh, Hadoop, I'm sure everyone's heard of Hadoop. Okay, good. Um, so when you do some kind of real-time thing, well, it's, Storm, it's uh, Storm or Spark Streaming or Flink or any of the new uh, streaming real-time data processing technologies, um, it's really unreliable to put your state in the actual processing system because it can uh, crash, nodes can die, the master can die, and then you lose significant chunks of state, which is oftentimes impossible to recreate because the real-time data has moved on. Right? And so you generally externalize the state, and where do you put your state? generally in a database, right? Like This is the reasonable place to put your state data. Uh, that's what databases are for. And um, if you just have some, something very simple, whether you're building, let's say you're, um, you're doing some kind of user tracking, right? Like 90% of all companies in the world do some kind of user tracking, whether it's on their website or you're doing um, advertising and you record the user interactions with the ad, or you're doing fraud detection and you need to build some kind of user profile over what your user is doing. And so you generally need to build some kind of state over time, and this state evolves. So it's very uh, expensive to lose after you've already, already built up a profile of your user, for example. And you can map this, the same scenario, on a bunch of different use cases where you ac accumulate data over time, and it's expensive to lose. Um, so what do, you, what do you do? You generally put this in some kind of data store. If you're looking at high enough scales, and this is why we're here today, right? Because the challenge here isn't the actual building of the data processing system. If you scale it out enough, if you have enough data to process, the challenge becomes just a pure engineering challenge of how do you process this much data reliably and how do you store this reliably? So you go and you put it in some kind of distributed data store, whether it's Couchbase or any of our other competitors. Generally speaking, when you look at data, uh, real-time in-memory data stores, they're all more or less on the same level in terms of performance and ability, right? Because there's really only so much you can do in memory, and it works at memory speeds. But once you get beyond just the pure in-memory data store and you want to do something more interesting with the data you've accumulated, and now comes the question of, what can you do that's, that doesn't require you to take all of this data and put it into a different analytical systems, system and work there? And you have a separate copy of this data for that kind of uh, query, and you go and create a separate copy of the data for a different kind of query in a dis different system. And uh, at Couchbase, what we've done is we've taken the basic key value store with a managed in-memory cache, and we've built a lot of layers of uh, features on top of that. So, so features starting with uh, indexing and query, where you can actually just run SQL-based queries on top of your uh, key value data, unstructured data, and you can create indexes and actually bring structure to your unstructured data. Let's say you're, and this is a demo I'm going to show in just a couple of minutes. We're going to get a bunch of tweets live from Twitter. 
because anyone who has ever done live demos knows that Twitter is the best thing for live demos there is, because you just get unlimited live data and it's very fun to watch. Um, so we can go and actually do some live queries on your uh, unstructured Twitter data and bring structure to what you expect to find in, in the data. And you can uh, then stream this data out of, out of the database. And Couchbase has integration with pretty much all the standard big data tools, whether it's Spark or Storm or Hadoop, uh, Talent, all the BI stuff, Elasticsearch, pretty much any industry standard tool you want to use to actually do analysis or machine learning, you can hook up to Couchbase and stream data in and out. Um, and then because all of this data is actually held in memory or the important parts of it are in memory, taking data out of the data store is very fast and very efficient, unlike a database which generally stores everything on disk where you're bottlenecked on the disk. Right? So you can do basically the same thing with any database and you can put all of your live data into a database, but then when you want to extract the data and do something interesting with it, you're, all, you're gonna read it from disk. And that's where the bottleneck comes in. With Couchbase, generally speaking, the important data is going to stay in memory, and when you use it, whether to run queries or stream it somewhere else, it's gonna come from memory at memory speeds, and then you're only bottlenecked generally on the network, which is much easier to scale, and is generally much faster. So let's look at a very simple, very live demo, because I know engineers like to see actual things happening on the screen and not just slides, and it's a flickering slide, which is annoying. Uh, but let's, uh, let's look at a very small demo. So the demo is as follows. What, first of all, we're going to take a very simple Spark program. We're going to stream data from Twitter in uh, live. Hopefully it's going to work. And we'll just um, get a bunch of tweets into Couchbase. Right? And the first thing I learned when doing demos with Twitter is you have to pick your keywords very carefully if you want to get a lot of tweets. And I tried a bunch of different stuff with uh, you know, industry terms. But ultimately, I settled that any time you want a lot of tweets and you want a lot of angry tweets, you go with politics. So I picked very appropriate keywords, and this guarantees that we'll get lots of tweets. And uh, since the next part of the demo is to do some sentiment analysis, I threw in some uh, important keywords which will guarantee a lot of sentiment. So let's do that. We'll, we'll stream some of this data. We'll uh, not do any processing on it. We'll just push all of this stuff into Couchbase, pretty much unstructured, uh, unstructured as is, and then we'll see what we can do with it. All right, so let's run this, and hopefully it will actually work. Yeah, it's going to take a second to spin up, and then we'll start getting a bunch of tweets. I encourage you not to read any of the tweets, because people on the internet are just bad people. Right? Don't read any of them. We'll do some machine learning on it later and discover just how bad they are. But we've got tweets coming in with hashtags and all that stuff. Wonderful. All right, we can go over to Couchbase and see what we got. We'll go into our, uh, this is the Couchbase UI, for those who've never seen it. Uh, but we go into any of the tweets and we'll see something like this, right? So we have all the basic data from the tweet. Let's zoom in a bit so we can actually see it. And as you can see, um, this has already been pre-processed, but we have the text, the user, and just a bit of data and location data in some tweets. In some tweets, we don't have location data. And so it's not actually very well structured. So now let's actually bring some sense into this data, right? So the first thing we want to do, we've put all this stuff into Couchbase. Now we want to take it out and do some processing, right? So we're going to switch over to Storm because I want to just like to spice things up. And if you're going to use big data tools, you might as well use all of them because that's pretty much how most companies want, uh, want to uh, support their systems. Um, so let's go over to Storm. And in our Storm topology, the thing that happens is Couchbase has a mechanism for streaming data in real time from the database. It can capture all the changes that happen in the database and stream it out into any system. In this case, Storm, it can be Spark Streaming, it can, it can be anything else. Uh, Kafka, for example, uh, I think there's a talk from uh, the guys at Confluent sometime later today, you should go and uh, listen to it. Uh, but then you can stream all of this data into something and process it, and then you can stream it back once you've done something, for example, enriched. So in this case, we're gonna enrich our data with some useful stuff. So what are we going to do? We're going to take our tweets, we're going to do some sentiment analysis and attach a sentiment score to the tweet, put it back in a database, and we're going to add some metadata. So we're going to analyze the tweet and see what usernames it refers to and what hashtags it has, and add those into the tweet as well. Right? We're going to extract them from the text and put them into the body of the JSON document itself. So then we can actually do something useful with that data, because then it's in the database and we can run queries on it. So this is all it does. Uh, by the way, for the sentiment analysis, I know we can do all kinds of stuff, but I just took the open source Stanford natural language processing library, and that's all I'm doing. I'm just giving it the tweet, and it tells me the sentiment is four, uh, which translates to, let's say, very positive. So this is all we do, and this happens in real time, so let's run this. And it will start taking uh, tweets from Couchbase. Um, 
at the same speed that they come in, right? They'll have some, a bit of a backlog right now to, to process, and then it will uh, catch up, right? And uh, you can use the same mechanism, for example, if you want to do batch processing. Uh, and I'll show that later, where you can just pull all of the data from GougeBase in chronological order, because that's how the streaming protocol works, and do processing on it uh, offline if you want, right? So for example, it works very, very similar to Kafka. How many people have uh, heard of uh, Apache Kafka? Show of hands, so make sure no one's asleep. So you've heard of Kafka. So internally, actually, CouchBase works very similarly, right? There's a, Kafka has a bunch of partitions for every topic, and you can scroll over the partition uh, in multiple times in, in a forward direction. Same thing with CouchBase. You can shard your data. And you can roll over every partition in CouchBase and just stream all of the data somewhere. And this is pretty much what we're doing. And in the background, this goes, and it calculates the sentiment score and puts it back into the document and then stores the document back in CouchBase. So now if we, if we go, let's stop this so we don't uh, eat up my CPU. So now if we go back to CouchBase, we can actually go and query it a bit. And CouchBase comes with, um, with a pretty sophisticated query engine, right? In addition to being a key value store, it has indexing and it works pretty much like you would expect indexing to work in SQL, where you just create an index on a, a field and those documents that have that field will be in the index, and then you can just run very simple queries. So let's start with something more simple. Let's say select star from tweets limit one, and this works. And we're running over our session data, and this is a tweet. We can see that this one has already been processed, and it has a negative sentiment, and uh, you can see the text and all that stuff, right? So we can actually do normal SQL queries on top of all the JSON unstructured data we got in there. So let's do something a bit more interesting. We can do a little, start doing some very baby analytics. Let's say select average sentiment score from tweets. And we don't know how many there are, but there's uh, probably about 20,000 at this point. But it's, it's pretty fast nonetheless, and we can see that the average sentiment is 1.21. Now, 1.21 is somewhere, somewhere between negative, one is negative, and two is neutral. So it's very close to negative. And now we can do something more interesting. For example, we can go and say where text like Trump, and so any mention of Donald Trump, will turn our sentiment score to much more negative. It's 1.08, which, as you can guess, is not surprising. But again, that, that was the whole point of the demo. Uh, I used to do this with different people before the election, but now it's just, let's just say, the election in the US have been wonderful for live demos, is my point. Anyway, uh, so now you can actually do some more interesting things with analytics. And you can go and you can dig into your code and you can do selects and actual SQL stuff on your code. But let's say you have so much data that you want to take it out. Let's say you have some offline data because you have historical user profiles or some historical data sitting in HDFS and there's terabytes and uh, possibly petabytes of it. And it's just not practical put, to put in a database. And um, CouchBase lets you put in, let's say, in the dozens of terabytes easily and do queries on them. But once you get into the petabyte range, this really isn't something you can put into a real-time database, right? This is a dupe territory, and you can take all of your uh, offline data, you can want to join it with existing real-time data from CouchBase. And if you can map this mentally from tweets and a, you know, a cute demo about Donald Trump, map it to something that you actually do in the industry, right? Whether it's doing user tracking and fraud detection or any kind of data processing and analytics, but it's all pretty much the same. You have streaming events coming into your system, you do some processing on them as soon as possible because the value of the insight you get from the data is higher if, it's, if it happens closer to when the event actually happened. And then you can all do a lot of more data when you accumulate enough of it, you can do a lot more processing and a lot more interesting stuff with it. So let's say we want to actually go and extract this data into some kind of BI tool, a proper BI tool. Now, Couchbase has integrations with all kinds of tools, including, for example, Tableau and uh, all of those BI pretty graph tools. We have integrations with Elasticsearch, where we can push over the data to Elasticsearch and do some text analysis on that. But in this case, I want to show you how to yank it back into Storm or, or Spark and actually run some Spark analytics on top of that. So let's go back to our uh, Spark, uh, sorry, this is the Spark program. And in this case, what we'll, we want is we want to extract all the positive tweets. We don't want to see any negative tweets. This is my Twitter feed. I want only to sh see the positive tweets. Now, I can't do it in real time, right? Because I have to wait for the processing to actually calculate the sentiment score. So there's going to be some delay. It's not going to be fully real time. But as soon as we calculate the score, I want to be able to see this tweet. So we have this job, which is going to uh, simply open a Spark streaming context for our database. 
it will just open a brand new uh, Couchbase stream, and it will just stream all the data from Couchbase. Now, if I want to do it just once, I can just stream all the data once, process it, and stop. In this case, we're going to leave it running, so it will actually go from batch into real-time mode pretty much uh, um, without any change. All right, so let's run this. And in the background, we'll run the same Spark job so we can calculate some more sentiment scores and see some, uh, some actual positive tweets. And I'm really hoping we'll actually get some positive tweets. There's, there are very few positive tweets. Like if you look at it, uh, for every, let's say, 100 neutral or negative tweets, there's like two positive ones. And maybe one in a 1,000 is very positive. So as you can see, right now we're getting empty uh, data sets because there are no positive tweets coming in. But there we go. We got a few. All right, and we can continue listening to the result of the other streaming batch job that's running and updating metadata in the database. Right? So this we can do in batch. We can do it uh, in real time, as we're seeing right now. Or we can also switch to something a bit more structured. So for example, let's say I want to do a join between a mic data with Spark and some other data, right? in which case I want to actually use some Spark SQL. Right? How many people have actually used Spark SQL for anything at all? It's like one guy, two, three, four. ah, four, nice. Uh, so Spark SQL is just, it just gives you a very nice query semantics on top of the Spark data frame abstraction. And we can do the same thing with Couchbase. We can actually push the query down to Couchbase because we don't want to pull all of the data from the database. Maybe it's terabytes, right? And then do the query in memory in Spark. What we want is we want to push down the query to the database, do, uh, uh, process all the predicates that is possible to process in the database, yank out a much smaller data set into Spark, and then do whatever we need to do there. So this is what we're going to do. Let's stop this. And we can switch to our uh, Spark query. And in this case, uh, what we have is a very simple query. We select user sentiment all the data from uh, tweets where the sentiment is over 3. And sentiment is over 3 if it's uh, positive, positive or very positive. right? In this case, what we'll do is we'll actually apply a schema to it, and we'll run a very simple Spark SQL statement. Right, so as you can see, we can do a Spark SQL, select these stores, and sort them by sentiment score, right? descending order. So th this part, the first part of the query, gets pushed down into this, uh, the database itself. So this will actually be executed in Couchbase and do the, uh, the selection uh, and uh, bring back a much smaller data set. And then the Spark SQL stuff will only do the sorting in memory and then present the results. So if you run this, on the accumulated data that we have in the background, um, it will hopefully bring back a few positive tweets, because we only want the good ones. We don't want to see any of the negative ones. So there we go. We have some excellent tweets, and very apropos politically as well. Um, there we go. Um, so we can actually see some positive tweets, and um, it's very hard to find uh, good ones, right? So. What did we learn from all this, right? It was a nifty demo, obviously, because you know, we've got tweets, we have politics, it's, it's, uh, it's a frisson. Uh, but let's go back to actually talking about what you do with streaming data, right? And the main point of, the, of this was uh, what we've focused on at Couchbase is to actually build a data platform, not just a data store, that lets you support a lot of different analytics scenarios, right? And we have many ways to put data in and, put data, and pull data out. Um, and in addition to all the stuff I just showed, we have a bunch of other stuff, including uh, replication between clusters, all the high availability features. And we have a built-in full-text search analysis engine, where if you don't want to have a third-party uh, application like Elasticsearch, you can just do your full-text search indexing within Couchbase. It's not as, as advanced as Elasticsearch yet, but we're, we're working on it. Uh, we have an upcoming feature called Couchbase Analytics, which will bring in the kinds of indexing you can do in um, uh, column databases. So for example, we, in the next upcoming version, we'll have column indexes on data, where you can have much higher data density and just have a lot more data in it, or time series indexing. Uh, and finally, we have a mobile solution. There's a second uh, product called Couchbase Mobile, uh, which is an in-process database for mobile devices or any kind of edge device. right? And it will run in any device. It can run Java or .NET or Mono. Uh, or Unity, for that matter, if you want to run it in a mobile game. And it generally is meant for mobile phones or uh, IoT devices where they're smart enough to actually run software. They're not just chips. Um, and what this does is it gives you an in-process NoSQL database. 
I'm sure everyone here, or most of you, have heard of SQLite, right? SQLite, everyone knows about it. You can run an in-process database, very, very simple. It doesn't actually support a lot, but it's nice. So it's the same idea, except obviously it's a NoSQL database. You have document semantics and all of that stuff. But the main feature of that is it can replicate and synchronize data with a main central couch-based database. Uh, what happens then is all of your edge devices, mobile phones, apps, um, any, any kind of smart device you want, that run an application with this built-in will continuously replicate data from the device to a central server or whenever there's connectivity, because one of the main challenges when you're looking at IoT devices is they don't always have connectivity, and the actual product itself, so the Cosmos Mobile, solves the connectivity issue, and it will just replicate whenever there's connectivity or whenever it actually syncs to the server. And eventually, it will sync all the data to and from the main Couchbase server. And this uh, gives you another addition of how, you to, how to bring data into Couchbase, right? So if you have some kind of device where you want to bring in telemetry or you have an application where you provide, let's say, a mobile SDK for ads to other apps and you want to send telemetry data back to the server, this solves a lot of the different engineering challenges in between without you having to build it, roll your own solution of how do you synchronize data, how do you store it locally, uh, how to monitor when there is connectivity or there isn't connectivity. So all of that stuff is abstracted, abstracted away, and the dev developer can actually focus on building the logic of the application and leave all the replication stuff to Couchbase. And once it's, once it's in Couchbase, you can then channel that into all the other stuff I've just showed, like listen to the data coming in from the edge devices, stream it into some kind of real-time processing system do whatever you need to do on it. For example, look for intrusion, right? So cybersecurity, I'm, I'm very sorry about using the word cyber in this context. It's just a stupid word, but cybersecurity is very big right now, right? Everyone's doing cyber something. Uh, so one of the use cases we have right now with the customer who's doing it is they send telemetry back from mobile applications, and in real time, they listen to this telemetry on the server side, and they monitor for abnormalities, right? For intrusions or uh, abnormal usage. And this is one use case. And uh, we have a bunch of other things we can map on pretty much the same framework, whether it's you're doing messaging or you're doing ads or any kind of streaming data where there is real value in treating it very quickly as soon as it comes in. This is where you can put in Couchbase and actually do your real-time stuff on top of that. So with that, I'm done exactly on the second where the, the clock went ding. And if you have any questions, I'll be over there in the back so we don't bother anyone. And thank you very much for listening. <laughs>